What's up guys? So Ashish sent me a very interesting game which had this position in it and he had a question at a really critical moment and I thought this would be a good learning opportunity for everyone. So white is going forward, black is coming down this way. It's a pawn race as you can see. It's white to play and I'm going to show you the whole game and how he led up to this position and then we're going to talk about what's going on and is this a win for white or is this a draw based on where black's pawn is? So let's go ahead and take a look. All right, so here we go. It was a Philidor defense, which you don't see all the time, although uh, I think it is more common at the lower levels. We get some trades, and one of the things that happens pretty early on, queens come off, and then right here, black gives up his second bishop, and so white ends up with the bishop pair. And generally speaking, the bishops against the knights is going to be an advantage for the bishops. Even in a case like this with, you know, messed up pawn structure, I would still prefer having the bishop pair. And one of the things about bishops, they can very easily work with pawns to kind of defend the pawns and the pawn can defend the bishop. And so even here, slight advantage for white. And now um, Ashish does a good job of trading off one of his isolated pawns and then trades off uh, a few more. Here's another one that goes off. A pair of rooks get traded. And he does a really nice job of bringing his king over at the end of the game. That's important, activating the king. And he wins this pawn. All right, so we get a bunch of trades. And here we are in this end game. Four over here, four over here, and white has the lone pawn. Okay, great. And here we get another trade. Now, one thing that I want to mention here, a lot of times when you're in end games like this and you have an extra pawn like this, you want to start pushing it right away and force your opponent's king to come and stop it, right? You want to force them to do that because by using it as bait, you can kind of lure the king away and then your king can come in, take all the pawns, and you have a very easy win. So what happens in the game is instead of kind of using the pawn as bait, Ashish goes ahead and just tries to promote this pawn. The issue is that now black and you can see black did a good job of this is going to be able to create their own pass pawn as well right he's going to come down here take this and push this and now you kind of end up with a, a race that you didn't even have to have right so if we go back so like right here i'm going to play c5 i'm just going to start pushing that pawn i'm going to force the king to come over here and get this and if black tries to just do the same thing and start pushing their pawns i'm going to play c6 and I'm going to play e5 check, and even though I'm losing a pawn here, what I'm doing is forcing black's king to come over here, and it's going to leave all of these pawns for me to just gobble up with my king, right? Like, that's the point. So if black takes, I'm going to take here, and look at this. I'm going to just come and take the pawns, and black's king can't really stop me, right? I'm going to come over here, and it's a very easy win now because I just basically took most of the pawns, right? So that's how I like to approach these end games where you have an extra pawn, especially when it's kind of on the, the other side of the board. Ideally, it would be even better if it was like over here on the A file, but this is good enough. Usually you want to use it as a decoy, push it just enough to make the king move away, and then you come to the other side and take all the pawns, right? That would have made white's life a little bit easier here. All right, but going back to the game, what was played, H3, runs with the king, which is, you know, this is not a bad strategy as well, but you have to be careful when Black's pawns are so far advanced because Black is going to be able to make a, you know, um, a pass pawn of their own as well. So that's what happens. And now we just get this race. He gets the queen and Black is one square away. All right, so this is an end game that I've covered on the channel in the past, but there's something peculiar about this position that I wanna mention. So before I say too much, let me ask you guys to pause and what do you think the result of this end game should be with perfect play from both the white player and the black player? What, what should the result of this end game be? All right, if you had a chance to think through that or maybe you already knew the answer, this should be a draw. Okay, because it's a bishop pawn, it should be a draw. If it's a rook or a bishop pawn, in these situations, most of the time it's going to be a draw. And the reason has to do with the fact that if we go check, black goes here, we go check, black goes here, we go check, it looks like we are forcing the king to either go in front of the pawn, which would blockade it, which is not what black wants to do, or go here and allow us to capture it. But the problem with the bishop pawn is that when we take it, we stalemate the, the king, right? The king has nowhere to move. It's a stalemate. It's a draw. That's the problem with the bishop pawn, okay? 
if it was a different pawn when this situation happened and black had to move away, it wouldn't be a stalemate. But with the the, um, the bishop pawn, it is. All right. So that is the kind of the general reason why this is normally a draw. Now, let's keep going with this game because something really interesting happens. So he throws in the check and black makes a really bad move, king to f1. Now, if black would have just played correctly, went in the corner, it's a draw. This move, however, gives white a chance to win the game. So again, I'd like you to pause. What do you think the winning move is for white? There's only one move here that wins the game for white. What do you think it is? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, the winning move in this position is only king to e5. That's it. Not any other move. And that's kind of mysterious because you might think, well, hold on a second. If you're moving the king here, couldn't you also move it here and still win? And why is that the only winning move? What, what's wrong with the queen move? So whenever you have these end games, there is a zone, okay? And I believe the zone is this. And if your king, I think you get the idea. If your king can enter into that zone, you can win as opposed to just getting a draw. All right. So if blacks, I mean, if white's king is like, you know, way over here in the corner, of course you, you can't win if it's over here or really far away, but if it's close to this zone, like it is right. Any of these kind of squares, if the king was on, you could step into the winning zone, right? You see that? And that is why in this position, Ashish had one chance to win the game. He had to go to the E5 square to get into that zone. And the reason that's a winning move is because this. Once we go here, what's black going to do? Well, they can't move this way. Have to come this way. And now we can do a little, you know, checking. And now black has to make a tough decision because you don't really want to go in front of the pawn and blockade it because it gives white an extra turn. But if you don't do that and you come over here, well, then white's going to do this maneuver, check, and you, you kind of have to go in front of it, right? Because if you go over here, white just takes the pawn. There's no stalemate trick. So that's why black made a really bad move in coming to this side of the pawn. Should have stayed on this side. But after this, now we can take advantage of this and bring our king closer. Now black can go here, get on the correct side. And now here's the winning technique for us. So we're going to go check. King's going to go in the corner. We're going to go check. King's going to go here. And now we're going to play the move king to g3. Now, if if black gets a queen, how do we win the game from here? You guys can pause and try to figure this one out. All right. If you had a chance to do that, the winning move is queen to e3 check. Of course, black can't block or we just take it. So they have to move over. Then we can swing back over here with check. Of course, they can't block again or we just take it. So they have to move back. And then we come in here for the checkmate on h2 okay so there's this little maneuver check checkmate all right that's what you want to remember and that is why white had the option to win the game now let's go back to what happened in the game for a second instead of playing king to e5 ashish in the game played the move king to d5 which looks very logical it looks like hey i'm still moving forward i'm still getting closer the problem is if we try to do kind of the same thing right so let's go check and we'll say um something like this check and now we come here look at the difference the king needed to be able to go to g3 to set up that checkmate net but now it's it's one square too far right it's one square too far now uh, so for example if we try to do like the same thing check check and we can't really make progress. We, of course, we can't take the pawn. We need to be able to play king to g3, but the king can't move like a knight. We just, this is not going to cut it for us. There's no checkmate here. Black just gets a queen and now it's a draw, right? So uh, now you probably should be asking a question in your mind right now. At least I would be if I was you. And that question, let me go back here for a second, all right? This was the position. Black made a mistake. Remember I said the zone uh, was like this. You should probably be asking the question, in this example, the king needed to end up on g3. How are any of these moves over here going to be winning for white, right? Because it looks like you're not going to get to g3 from this direction. So how, how come you can still win from this side of the pawn? So, so what I'm going to do is actually just make some moves here for both players just to kind of reposition this game for a second. I'll move white here. 
and uh, let's just say, all right, here we go. So it's white's turn, and now the king is way over here, and you remember the zone that I just drew for you guys, right? Can white step into that zone? Well, yes, he can. So we're going to go here. We could have actually went to any of these because they all step into the, the winning zone. Uh, black's going to play this move, only move that black can play because everything else was, was taken away. And now we're going to do this really interesting idea of check. And the king is trying to come over here because that's where it's going to be a draw, right? We're going to go check, force the king up here. Queen to g2, so we pin it. So black has to go down to threaten to get the pawn. And of course, if black ever like moves up, we just blockade the pawn and win, right? So has to go down here. And now we play the crazy move, king to c2. And what we're doing is saying, go ahead, get the queen, and boom, there's checkmate. So this is another sort of checkmate pattern. You remember in the other position, we had to do that dance where it was like check, and then we came over here, check, and then we came down for the checkmate. Here, it's kind of the same thing where the queen is sort of blocking off the king from escaping, but it's checkmate on the other side like this, right? So the key thing that you have to remember, wherever your king happens to be, let's go back to the game, I guess. Uh, wherever your king happens to be, all you need to really focus on is getting into that winning zone, okay? And once you get into that winning zone, then you have to start thinking about, okay, how can I position my king in just the right place so that when black gets the queen, I can follow it up with checkmate, right? That's the idea. And if it's on this side, you're going to be going to G3 and you saw the, the maneuver that we looked at earlier, right? If it's over here, you're going to be doing the little thing that I just showed where the queen forced the king uh, to come up. You pin it, and then you bring the king over, and you get the checkmate that way. So hopefully that makes sense. It's it's different depending on which side your king is on, right? And if you uh, – maybe an easy way to remember the zone is wherever the pawn is at, just kind of draw a diagonal, two squares, and then do one kind of like this. This is just how I remember it. And then it goes all the way across the board where the pawn is. It stops one file short over here. And so this is the zone that you have to get your king into, right? And so if this is an advanced thing, so I'm not, uh, I don't, you know, hopefully Ashish doesn't feel bad that he didn't know this. This is much more advanced stuff. But for next time, Ashish could think about this. And then when it's his turn, he would, you know, move his king here um, instead of here. And he would be in the winning zone. All right. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, a little bit more advanced than what I normally cover, but this does actually come up pretty often because you get these pawn races a lot of the times and, you know, one person has an extra pawn. If it happens to be a bishop pawn, you'll know what to do. All right, so I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that, learned something, and I'll see you next time. As always, stay sharp, play smart, and take care.